I've got another variation function for you. This is another type. In this one, we're given y varies inversely as x. Anytime you see inversely, you're going to have an inverse variation. But what you need to start thinking about is fractions. Because whenever you see inversely, you're actually going to be writing that variable in the denominator instead. So if you think back to those direct variations, it was just the left-hand side equals the right-hand side straight across. But with inversely, you're actually going to have to move that variable on the right-hand side to the denominator. So I see y varies. That means y equals. Now, because it varies inversely, I'm immediately going to write a line to indicate a fraction. It's inversely as x, which means x is going in the denominator. What's going in the numerator? Everybody's favorite constant of variation, k. Or if you're using other letters, go for it. So. We're going to end up writing an inverse variation function that satisfies y equals 2 when x equals 6. This always helps us find our constant of variation k. So using that information, I'm plugging those into the function. And now to solve for k, what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 6 to get it out of the denominator. And that means k is equal to 12. I've said it in previous videos, please do not just underline or circle k equals 12 and say that that's your answer. You're going to put that back into the function that I wrote to begin with as the k value. And we're just going to use y and x, because remember, the 2 and the 6 just go together, and then I don't use them anymore once I find k. So my function is y equals 12 over x. Now, this is what's called a rational function. A rational function is something that can be re, re uh, sorry, something that can be written as one polynomial over another. So I've got two polynomials here. 12 is a polynomial. They're both polynomials. One's in the numerator, one is in the denominator. Now, we're going to graph this, and for whatever reason, people hate picking x values. I'm not sure why. I find that a lot of people struggle with that. You are allowed to plug in whatever you want here. You pick the x values, but I'm just going to show you which ones would probably be easiest in order to graph this. Now, I want you to think first, is there anything that we can't plug in for x? Now, remember, x is in the denominator, so think about your rules with fractions and division, and hopefully you know that you are not allowed to divide by 0, which means I cannot plug in x equals 0. And a little later, you will see what that looks like on the graph. But x can't be 0. So now I'm going to move on and plug in other numbers. Again, you can plug in whatever you want, but I'm going to plug in numbers that will be easiest to work with a 12 in the numerator. I hate scrolling on this thing. Okay. So. 12 divided by something. Notice I've got two charts here. I'm actually going to end up plugging in a lot of numbers because I'm going to plug in numbers both to the left and to the right of x equals 0. Remember, we can't plug in x equals 0, so I'm going to plug in numbers around it. So I'm actually going to plug in five numbers. I didn't give myself enough room. These are numbers that all go into 12, so that's why I chose them. I'm going to do the same thing, but negative. If you can divide by a positive, you can divide by its negative also. 
So you're plugging those in to 12 over x. So for instance, if you plug in x equals 1, you're doing 12 over 1. If you're plugging in x equals negative 6, you're doing 12 over negative 6, and those will go in the y columns. So I highly suggest you pause the video so that you can fill in those charts, those charts on your own. Here they are one more time. All right, hopefully you came up with this, plugged in all of my numbers, got out my y values. Now what you're going to do is plot these on the graph. If you haven't done it yet, I would suggest you do it. Pause the video. And if you're not comfortable connecting them yet, just wait until I connect them. Now remember, we couldn't plug in x equals 0. And you'll see that there's a jump over the x equals 0 where that graph does not exist. Um, you can see that I drew arrows on the ends of each of these branches. These do go on forever. I just didn't plug in every number possible because I'd be here for the rest of eternity. But that is what a rational function looks like. There are a bunch of different ones, but this is a very basic rational function. Now, something that rational functions have is what we call an asymptote. They have at least one of them. In this case, I actually have two of them. Remember what I said about not being able to plug in x equals 0? You can see that I drew this dashed line, which is representing an asymptote, which means that the graph will never cross x equals 0. We actually have another asymptote at y equals 0, which means that you're never going to get out an answer of 0 when you plug in your x values. So we have two asymptotes here where the graph will never, ever touch. It'll just get really close. So that's why this is actually in two different pieces, because there are restrictions on our domain and range.